Hello, friends. Welcome to a new happy learning video. Today, we are going to learn what the units are: the tens and the hundreds. It's going to be so much fun. Do you know what a unit is? It's very easy. Each element is called a unit. It could be anything. For example, a toy, a tree, or an animal. The units are represented by single-digit numbers. One fish is equal to one unit. So, if we have two units, we represent them with the number two. Three units with the number three, and so on. Up until the number nine. Wow! So many fish. One more, and we will have ten. Ten units. Hmm. Do you see what happens with the number ten? We now have two digits: the one and the zero. We have a ten because ten units make a ten. <sighs> Remember, a ten. Is a grouping of ten units. Let's leave our fish tank here, because here come two more fish. If we count them all now, we'll have twelve units, twelve fish, or, in other words, a ten and an additional two units. I write it like this: the units in the first position, starting from the right, and the tens in the second position, always starting from the right. Now, imagine that the number of fish is increasing, and now you fill two fish tanks, and each tank has ten fish. We would have two lots of ten. The tens start from ten and go up in tens. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, and so on, up to the number ninety. One more ten, and we would have one hundred, one hundred units, one hundred fish. Oh, how wonderful! That would be equal to ten tens or a hundred. There are so many fish. I wish we could keep them all. The number a hundred has three digits. The hundreds are written in the third position, starting from the right. For example, let's write the number a hundred and thirty-five, which is equivalent to five units, three tens, and a one hundred. Let's try with some other numbers. Three hundred and sixty-seven. Now it's your turn. How many units do you think there are? Very good. There are seven units. The units are written in the first position, counting from the right. How many tens are there? Yes. Very good. There are six tens. The tens are written in the second position, counting from the right. And thirdly, how many hundreds do you see? Exactly three hundreds. The hundreds are written in the third position, counting from the right. Yay! Now you know what the units, tens, and hundreds are. You can practice with more numbers because units. Tens and hundreds are essential to be able to add and subtract, and it's a lot of fun too. Great! You've completed the video. Now continue the route with the reading card, the video game, and the activity. Cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. Do you remember what natural numbers are? Naturally, natural numbers are all numbers. The ones we use to count, to add, to subtract, 
to do mathematical calculations and also to put things in order. Depending on how we use them, we call these natural numbers cardinal numbers or ordinal numbers. Cardinal numbers are the ones we use to count or to do accounts. The happy Fanny is having a birthday party. How many children are there at his party? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. They are six children. So we can say the number of children at the party is six. That six is a cardinal number. With cardinal numbers, we can also do mathematical operations. We can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Let's try it. Let's add up the balloons. We have to see if there are enough for all of them. We have one, two, three, four red balloons, and one, two, three blue balloons. If we add 4 plus 3, the total amount is 7. 7 balloons in total. The result of this sum is 7. That 7 is a cardinal number. What luck! Each child will get a balloon and there will be 1 left over. The cardinal numbers have allowed us to know how many children there are at this party and also to add up the balloons. In other words, the cardinal numbers indicate quantity. Look, look! The happy pandy has lined up for a balloon race. They're about to go off. Bang! What a fright! A balloon popped. But which one was it? Was it the first one? No, the second one. No. The third? Not the third one either. It was the fourth balloon. The one the girl in fourth position was holding. But wait a minute. Why do we say the numbers differently now? Well, because we are indicating a position in an order. When we use the natural numbers to order or to indicate the position element within a group, we use ordinal numbers. Ordering, ordinal, ordering, ordinals. It's easy peasy. For every cardinal number, there is an ordinal number. So the cardinal number one corresponds to the ordinal first. It is written like this, a one followed with the letters ST in small. Two corresponds to the ordinal second. Three, third. Four is called fourth and five, fifth. Six, sixth. Seven, seventh. Eight, eighth. Nine, ninth. Ten, tenth. And so on. See? There's nothing too complicated about it, is there? All quite ordinary, really. It's only really the first three numbers that change their pronunciation. The rest is their number and add th at the end. Now let's review. Natural numbers are all numbers and depending on how we use them, they can be cardinal or ordinal. Cardinal numbers are the ones we use for counting and for doing mathematical operations. They give us quantities. Ordinal numbers are the ones we use to order or to indicate the position of an element within a group. They are used for ordering. The race is over! Lau has arrived before anyone else at the finish line. Then Chris and then Fu Chen. Would you dare to say it with ordinal numbers? Of course you would. It's not hard. Lau came first. Chris second. And Fu Chan third. 
Yes, indeed. And you're number one because you understood it the first time, not the second or the third. <laughs> what a joker. Goodbye, happy friends. See you next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel.